Hi everyone. So on today's video, we are going to discuss and talk about Hindenburg's Dogla Pun. Now, Hindenburg is an America-based organization, and it came out with a report against Adani Ji, and it levied a bunch of allegations that you know what insider trading is there, shell companies have been created, stock manipulation has been done, which caused mass panic in the Adani group of stocks, and some of the Adani group stocks fell by 80-80 percent. Now the story has changed, and karma has bit the U.S. There are major major banks in the U.S. that are going under. For example, Silicon Valley Bank crisis is going on, and this bank has completely collapsed. Regulators have taken control of silicon valley bank and hindenburg is not saying anything so there are finance experts who have jumped onto this topic for example mr vindudara singh he is saying that adani group has paid back all of its loans hindenburg research labeled adani as a scam but said nothing about silicon valley bank it sort of demonstrates how accurate hindenburg research is now some of you would be scratching your head that okay vindudara singh finance expert how is that well he was invited by big boss for probably his financial expertise and after that his name was also involved in ipl match fixing for which he went to jail also so anyway coming back to the topic i posted this same question to all of you on the youtube community post section and i got varied response so let me read out two three responses very very important there so the first response i got was from sahil and he said that you know people do not understand the concept of opportunity cost and hindenburg has been researching on adani for the last 2 3 years and probably they did not get the same amount of time in terms of doing research on silicon valley bank otherwise they would have also shot it On the flip side, there were other extreme arguments. For example, Ronak said that they have been trying to hinder the reputation of India, and then some people said that you know what, Akshat, you leave all of this. Basically, just block these spammers. So these days, there are a lot of spammers who comment under my name. So those are not my comments. Please understand that I do not contact you on WhatsApp or ask you to transfer some money to some trading account or buy some asset. This that I do not do that. I only run a community called as Wisdom Hatch Community. If you want to buy any of my products, please go on Wisdom Hatch, and you can take a look at bunch of. courses that i'm offering i'm creating an investment community and wisdom hatch is the only website through which i'm doing that so anyways coming back to this topic let us systematically debunk this debate by understanding the nuanced financial points finance is a complicated subject you need to understand finer points and finer details of any particular matter before you start siding with any organization i will present all the facts and then you yourself will be able to reach the conclusion again a very quick note that this might become a slightly controversial topic if you want to attack me it's pretty much pointless if you want to attack me please attack my argument that is where i'll humbly request you god has given brain to all of us we should use it for rational analysis that is my simple request so with that said let me speak about a few critical points related to this issue so the first critical point that you should understand is that what is the exact nature of work of hindenburg organization now hindenburg is a us based company no doubt about that first and foremost they are a research and investment firm what it simply means is that they are not a regulatory authority they are not a ratings agency company they are not a magazine or a media based agency they are an investment company what does that mean it means that they are putting their own money in whatever trades that they are speaking about the strategy that they typically use is that they do something called as short selling so short selling is a type of an investment strategy and let me just very quickly explain this because i had made a separate video on what hindenburg actually does and you can check this video here i have explained that entire case study in detail in case you are interested in understanding that entire case what hindenburg has specifically said about adani ji please go and watch that video but very quickly for new viewers i will explain in like less than 30 seconds so short selling let us understand it with an example that let's say that you have itc now you as an investment firm might think that you know what the fundamentals of itc is bigada hua and there is something wrong with itc stock and going forward it might fall and it might fall all the way to 200 rupees so what you are going to do is that you are going to do something called as short selling now here what they will do is that they will sell it here when the stock price is 300 rupees and they will buy it here so they will buy it at 200 and they will pocket the difference of 100 rupees per stock now you'll say that okay how does that happen because when i go on zeroda i do not see the option that okay itc is 300 and i am selling it at 200 well for that you do something called as futures and options how exactly to do short selling you don't need to understand that but you simply need to understand the simple point that a lot of investment companies they do short selling in order to make money 
Now you'll say, okay, this game is big, right? I mean, I will just think that okay, some stock will fall. I will go and short sell it and I'll make crazy money. Or if I'm a little bit sinister, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to publish a report. What is it? Go create a PDF, create like 80 random things, pick like 20 different news articles and hawa chala do on social media that okay, with this company, something is wrong, this, that. And then the stock price will fall. I will make money. Please use a little bit of brain that it is not as easy as it looks to short sell stocks. Why is that the case? So for this, you need to understand a little bit more that when you are short selling a stock, your losses are infinite and your profits are limited. Why is that the case? So think about it this way that this stock was trading at 300 rupees. What is the maximum price this stock can reach theoretically speaking? So theoretically it can reach to infinity. But what is the maximum fall that can happen on this stock? Well, it is 300 rupees because it can maximum fall to zero. So if it falls to zero, then my profit as a short seller is 300 rupees. But if I am not able to predict correctly that the stock is going to fall and despite all the sinister things, I run reports and whatnot, then I am losing crazy amount of money. So for that, let me give you two very interesting case study. The first case study comes from a trader called as Jesse Livermore. So Jesse Livermore was considered to be one of the most celebrated traders in the US. And back during the Great Depressions, he took massive swing trades, massive short selling trades, and he bet on the fact that the markets are going to fall. And he made crazy amount of money. If you actually attribute it, he made billions of dollars as per today's purchasing power parity. And he became like super rich during that time. And four years later, he committed suicide because he was having financial troubles. Why was that the case? Because he continued to short sell stuff and he ended up losing crazy amount of money. So that is the first case study that you need to remember, which talks about the power of short selling and also the risks associated with short selling. Now you will say that, okay, you are telling some 100 year old story, but nowadays the internet is very powerful. I'll go on Twitter, I'll create like some random report, put it, and then I'll ask my friend to retweet it, what not. And short selling will definitely work. No, that is not the case. In fact, just a couple of years back, a lot of traders tried to short a stock called as GameStop stock and the total loss there for short sellers was 91 billion dollars. So what I'm trying to tell you is that this short selling strategy as lucrative as it sounds, as good as it sounds, it is not as easy to execute. Now coming back to the Hindenburg story that yes, they do short selling, but they have to put in a lot of research. They have to put a lot of analysis. They might try to shake the branches of the tree, but if the tree is strong, that tree will not be uprooted. I am trying to speak in figurative terms, but I'm sure that smart people got my viewpoint here. So now let's speak about the next point that, okay, you know what, this is like a US based company and US wale apna to dekhte nahi hai. They, they keep on meddling with Indian affairs, this, that. Okay. So let's go to the root of the Silicon Valley Bank case. So who do you think did the whistle blowing in a way for Silicon Valley Bank case? So I would argue that it was Gary Tan, who is the president of Y Combinator, which is one of the biggest supporters of startup ecosystem. In fact, it has been alleged that Mr. Peter Thiel withdrew all his firm's money from Silicon Valley Bank before the bank collapsed. And if you take a look at this article from Business Insider, it has been categorically written that Peter Thiel founders fund withdrew all of its funds from Silicon Valley Bank, Bloomberg reported. Now, why did he do that? Because his VC fund took action after encountering problems with transfers. Now, if you read the entire report, you will quickly figure out that Peter Thiel's organization people, they asked to make a transfer from Silicon Valley Bank to one of their companies, but the transfer did not go through. So at that stage, Peter Thiel and his team figured out that they there might be something wrong with Silicon Valley Bank. They studied the balance sheet more and then they pressed the panic button. So the point that I'm trying to outline is that it is not some like nationalistic war that is being fought between India or US or China or India, Vagera, Vagera countries. Nothing of that sort is happening. Some shady stuff is happening in America that is coming out. And if some shady stuff is happening in India, that will also come out. Now, the third and the most important point is the nature of problem that exists in Adani Group stocks versus Silicon Valley Bank. So for this, you need to understand a little bit of finance. So I would request you to hear this section patiently. Even if you are a school going student, you will easily understand this point. Okay, so there are three critical problems that any company or organization could face. Now there are a bunch of other problems, but three are the major ones. So first is called as liquidity problem. For example, if HDFC Bank has customer deposits worth $100 million, and if HDFC Bank goes and buy government bonds, right? 
Now, what is the value of their total assets? It is close to $100 million because they have converted this customer deposit into government bonds, which are decent or good quality assets, so to say. Now, what could happen is that there could be some fluctuation with government bonds in the secondary market. They might fall a little bit or they might rise a little bit. But if you hold government bonds till maturity, then you will be able to recover your entire money. Now, in liquidity problem, what ended up happening with Silicon Valley Bank was that they had certain amount of asset. Let's assume it to be $100 million dollars these were good quality assets these were 30 year held till maturity government bonds there was no asset quality problem with the bank it was a liquidity problem now what is the meaning of liquidity problem it simply means that the depositors started asking back their money that hey we have deposited money in your bank we want it back now unfortunately silicon valley bank had done fixed deposits on all these government bonds 30 year htm securities and their price fell in the secondary market so this was a liquidity problem that the asset quality was good no trouble there this asset would have become whole if they were held to maturity it is just that the depositors started asking for money and temporarily the bank had liquidity troubles so this is called as liquidity concern now this was the issue with silicon valley bank the other type of issue is the solvency issue now this happened in 2008 crisis now here what happened was that there were a bunch of houses and the mortgage or the loans on these houses were packed as mortgage back securities now the value of these houses fell due to the real estate crash and as a result the value or the real value of these mortgage backed securities also fell now in solvency cases what ends up happening is that if the value of the asset was 100 million dollars and there was a permanent impairment or a fairly significant impairment on the asset here for example the real estate value went down then it became like 60 million dollars now this is an actual loss of asset and the company can face something called a solvency issue. Now, I am not saying that Adani group has this trouble. This is for investigators to find out. But the allegation there was very simple that you know what the stock price of Adani group was pumped up from let's say 100 rupees to 300 rupees. So the stock value went up. Then step two was that these stocks were pledged and the loans were raised on that. Now, what is the underlying value? Here? The underlying value is the stock price itself. So stock manipulation becomes a serious allegation. Now comes the third concern, which is the mismanagement. Now, mismanagement can come in various shapes and sizes. For example, on Adani Group, the mismanagement issue was that, you know what, you hired like bunch of amateur CAs to do your audits. That is incorrect. That is a category of mismanagement, so to say. Entire control is with the family itself. If the company is not being audited, all these things can be classified. I'm saying can be classified as mismanagement. Now, what is the mismanagement issue with Silicon Valley Bank? Well, it is very simple and it can be seen from here that their own CEO sold their stocks. So this is opportunism. This this is not mismanagement per se. This could be classified as insider trading and now the US authorities might investigate and reach some conclusion. But to cut the long story short, in organizations like Hindenburg, whose primary job is to make money short selling stocks, they would always look for candidates where the stock price is very bloated to begin with and Adani Group met that criteria. That's point one. Point two, and this is a fairly logical point that Hindenburg will not always be number one when it comes to uncovering scams. There are a bunch of American companies American entrepreneurs that somewhat uncovered the issues that were going on with Silicon Valley Bank. I gave you a couple of examples there. Number three and the most important aspect is that Hindenburg is an investment organization. They put their own money. Now they might see one, two, three, four, five good option to short sell and they might only end up picking one or two. Why is that the case? Because they are putting their own money. Very similar to how you and I put our own money on things that we believe in and in case we are shorting some things then things that we are reasonably sure are going to fall. So in summary there are a few points that I will say that number one this is not nationalism. I made a separate video on that. Please go and watch it. You will get more clarity on the issue. Number two bad agents need to be punished everywhere. If Silicon Valley bank people have done mismanagement they should 100% be punished. Why? Because the retail investors get hurt. Similarly, if some scams are going on in Indian companies, then they should also be punished. That is a simple ask. Finally, finance stories are complicated. You need to get into the nitty gritties. You need to understand the finer print as to why certain decisions are taken by investment research firms, why certain decisions are not taken. And you yourself need to logically think that whether or not some short selling organization, can it take all the short selling trades in the world and need to reach a logical conclusion. Let me know what did you think of the video. I would love to to hear your feedback on it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon.